today we have a very interesting company and and um uh, it's Anne from Anne Engholm from bestseller and she will tell us a little bit about her agile journey so i think i just will hand it over to you Anne. Mm -hmm. okay and thank you and good morning uh... I just, uh, as I said, uh, when if, when some of you were joining, it's just uh, so nice to see uh, old faces. Some of you I haven't seen in a while. Uh, it makes me very humble and also proud, and also very proud that so many decided to actually join. This is just my story. It's not really that interesting, if you ask me. But <laughs> apparently, uh, I have something to share. And I remember at some point uh, I said to Pia Maria, but I'm not the type of person that would do presentations. And then she actually caught me. Because she said, but think about the difference you can make for people out there that are just on your journey as well, just would really like to be inspired. And then I thought, well, I'd like to share my story and I like to share my journey. So uh, I hope that uh, any of you, any of it is just uh, useful for you. And uh, if you don't like it, it's OK. But uh, you can reach out to me and ask all the questions later. That's uh, just perfectly fine. But I think uh, just before we get started, I'll share a bit about who I am for those who don't know me and also probably for those who know me. I'm not sure that you know my CV and the story like that. And I'll also share a bit about the company that I'm in and the part of the organization I'm working within as well. So uh, we did actually prepare, or we didn't. I prepared a short presentation for you guys that I will share with you here. So, um, <clears throat> First of all, who am I? Well, I'm Anne uh, Ingholm and I've been working in Bestseller and the IT department of Bestseller as a senior uh, people uh, business partner for uh, a bit, uh, almost uh, three and a half years. I've been working in HR since uh, 2002, so I can't even, do oh, that's quite a few years, uh, actually, when you start doing the calculation. But anyways, I've been working in HR for a period of time. My background is completely different. I, I Actually, I'm a translator and interpreter, but don't ask about that. But I got into HR, I think it was back in 2007 or 8, and just worked uh, my way around uh, that. Uh, working in a design company for quite some years, uh, primarily within HR, then in a, in a manufacturing company, then I came into a fashion company, which is called Stoy, <clears throat> and now a Bestella, which is also a fashion company, and we like to think of ourselves as a tech company as well. Some of the background that I actually wanted to uh, just, I just put up here is, uh, I think, where what made the biggest difference for me in uh, my uh, what is that called? Educational background is actually when I got my master in digital innovation. Uh, it's my second master. Um, and also certainly when I got to uh, be a, a agile people coach, when I took the education from agile people uh, back in uh, 2020. It's approximately one and a half years ago since I finished that. So enough about me, I'm really not that interesting. I can share with you that I'm, a, I'm only 48 years old. I live in uh, Denmark, in, uh, in Jutland. Um, I'm the type of person who likes to run and uh, stuff like that. But again, I live in the countryside and outside today it just looks to be a beautiful, beautiful day. So I hope that they will just stick that way. But anyways, enough about that and enough about me. So a uh, bestseller, for those of you who don't know bestseller, I will just run through this very fast. Uh, bestseller was found, founded back in uh, 1975 by uh, the couple Anna's and Rede Holt Paulsen. And actually uh, today they are, it's a much bigger company uh, with uh, 20 different uh, fashion brands. I will show you a slide on that in a second. So if you don't, if you're not sure if you know bestseller, you will know in a bit. Um, we are today uh, owned and also, uh, you could say, uh, run by Anders Folk Poulsen, uh, who's the son of Anders uh, Trolls and Marete, and uh, he has been heading up um, bestseller, uh, the entire company of bestseller since 2001. We are deeply rooted in uh, our vision, and I think this actually is, is very, for those of us who are inside the walls of bestseller would know that this is true, that we actually base our every day on being one world, one philosophy, and one family. And nearness is just one of the very uh, important things that actually stand out for us. We uh, 
live by our founding principles that were actually made back in 75 by uh, Trotsky Paulsen. And I think uh, you all know this. Then you go onto a website, you see them. Are they really there? But for us, they really are. And we live by them. And I actually myself use them often uh, just to guide me on a daily basis. Should I go this way or that way? And the founding principles will let me know. We're approximately 18,000 people. Uh, we have 20 uh, different brands and uh, we are placed in uh, 38 different uh, countries. These are some of the brands. Hopefully some of you know them. Uh, and if not, I can only urge you to uh, go find them because uh, we actually, uh, we have uh, great stuff uh, on the shelves in the stores. I work in Bestel IT, as I said, and uh, I will just share a bit with you on uh, who Bestel IT is for a couple of minutes. This is us. Uh, this is us right before the pandemic uh, hit us. So, um, but I think uh, it actually shows very well who we are and also the spirit that we have within. We have approximately 250 people supporting the entire 18,000 people in a bestseller. Uh, we, uh, have uh, quite a few uh, different nationalities, about 37 teams. And I think the fundamental and also the reason why we're here today is that we actually work uh, agile. In the IT, we support the entire supply chain. So that means from a, a, the brands getting idea of uh, wanting to design a, something a, and also both the, the sourcing and getting a, a goods produced and actually also delivered to us getting into our big logistics centers before it hits either wholesale or also our retail. But we support it all. So whether it's a cash register that's not working or it's me that's not able to print, we just have to be able to actually support that from an IT perspective. Just so you know that we cover quite a lot uh, and 250 people suddenly doesn't seem uh, like a lot, uh, at least not to me. We have found that our vision in IT is that IT means business, and we have some strategic drivers to actually uh, deliver on that. For myself, I uh, support and uh, work uh, primarily with uh, Belong and Grow, and also the one that's called Agile and Ambitious, but I will not tire you with uh, any more of uh, that. So I think that was just uh, the beginning, beginning uh, of that, Ingela. Yeah, we thought we were going to do it a little bit differently than just um, than just um, uh, having a presentation. So uh, the intention is for me, I will start and ask Anne some questions. And um, if you want, you can raise your hand and then we will let you also ask questions. It's going to be much more fun that way, I think. It will be, but yeah, we are definitely. 63 people, so we need to coordinate it uh, somehow. Uh, but please raise your hand and, and we will let you in. Um, but um, we have been talking a little bit, Anne, and I know you joined uh, the, start, the change process has already started when you joined uh, Bestseller. Uh, can you... Um, can you say a little bit uh, about the, the, the background, why, why things happened and how, where, you, where it was when you arrived? I can at least share uh, what I've heard. Uh, mm -hmm. And I can see we have people in the call that actually were there. So if you uh, want to correct me, please uh, feel free to do so. <laughs> uh, but yes, one of the things that we'd experienced was that we were very much focusing uh, on one uh, big project in uh, IT, delivering a one big project for uh, our entire uh, organization, uh, rolling out a new ERP system. And uh, at some point, we also uh, understood that we uh, somehow had lost the connection to our stakeholders and also the close uh, link uh, delivering what would they actually needed, but also delivering it uh, fast. So delivering the right solution uh, at a fast uh, pace. Um, so that was one of the reasons. Uh, so uh, we also wanted to be, become a bit more efficient and then get this close collaboration with the stakeholders. So we would actually deliver what they were asking for uh, at, a, at a certain pace. And, I, pace. and then I think I also, um, in the IT, we were very good at uh, delivering support and also operations, but doing a uh, development and digital, digitalization was not uh, our primary focus. So we wanted to change that a bit. 
And I also know that uh, I joined in October 18, and that was just uh, right after the transformation, like from day to day had happened, but uh, already back in January the same year, so exactly four years ago, they started a pilot project to see, so what could Scrum actually, what would that work like for us? And could it work? So they set up a small pilot project, and I, I, I heard it was with approximately 25 or 30 people in a in a smaller team within the retail area, where they actually tested out did this work or didn't it work? And they, the top management came to the conclusion that it had been such a great success that they they wanted to go agile in the entire organization, and so they did in a June 2018. But getting closer to the customers uh, actually yeah. was uh, and delivering the right solutions faster. Yeah. And then you arrived, and what was your role? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and then I arrived. Okay. Uh, well, the funny thing is that um, I, I also shared this with you, uh, and I, I I I love to share this story because during my interviews uh, that went on in the. Uh, August and September, so the transformation happened in the in June, and I, I joined in October. So uh, when I I had the job interviews, I uh, never actually heard about Agile, and uh, there could be two reasons for that: either because I just did not understand it and had an idea of I had to listen in for that, or the company just didn't share that uh, much with me on that, and they, I haven't tested it. Uh, with uh, those who actually hired me, so uh, what was it? What was it? But what they did do, do was ask me to uh, work uh, on uh, how do we do change management, and uh, I did uh, something on that. And I also asked them when I was hired, so why did you pick me? And they actually said, well, because we think you can bring the calmness and also uh, the nearness back into the organization. And uh, I have to be honest and say I had no idea what they meant by that until I actually walked in the door. I think, yeah. So, but you, you never don't. You never know what it is to join a, a company or, or, or go into a new job until you're actually there. So, but yeah, and my mm. role was then just to be HR. Mm. In a Bestseller, we have a, a HR department called People, and a, then we have business partners. Business partners either are working from people and just a, borrowed out into the business or you employed and sit and work in the business. And I sit in IT, I have a direct reference to our CIO and I sit in our leadership team also. So I sit out there and I represent the HR and I build the HR stuff and build the organization. So that is my role and that has been my role from day one. Hmm. That it got a different connotation to it when I joined in, it's, hmm. it's a different story that we will touch yeah. upon in a minute, I think, yeah. <laughs> Yes, um, so uh, you arrived and you were going to do HR and, and can you a little bit describe the different phases you have gone through on your journey, because I guess you started from scratch. Uh, there are like uh, two journeys, so there's my own, but I think you're also referring to the one that Bessel IT went through on their mm -hmm. agile journey. Yeah, so uh, I think, first of all, we actually went from um, being this traditional uh, plan being run organization and then actually being set up in a or transformed into a, an agile setup. Uh, and we actually said to all our uh, development teams that we want you, you have to run Scrum and try to see what Scrum can do for you. It's like the what is it, Shuhira or Shuhari? I can't remember it anymore, but it's like uh, follow the book, then uh, break the rules and make your own new rules. So we asked mm -hmm. them to actually follow, uh, follow the rules. So, but getting the concept right, getting into what, what is it actually to work agile. So I think that was the first phase, landing on our two own feet, uh, having all the teams set up in new autonomous teams and all that, that was the first phase. Uh, and it was not a sh short phase, it was a long phase. And I think for many of us, it was also a difficult phase to be in because uh, for many of us, uh, I think uh, going from, being the leaders that we were, where we had, we were wearing all the hats to suddenly just having either you're the product owner or the scrum master or whatever. I think that they was a, that was a, that was at the beginning, just finding our feet to stand on in a new setup. And then I think a, the next phase has been actually to, a, to start working agile. And one thing is, I think uh, someone said to me at some point, you can work 100% agile or is scrum without being agile at all. 
because it's all about the mindset. And I think that's what we've been working with very much. We mean it. It's here to stay. So now it's been here for three and a half years and it's not really going back. I think for the first year, some of us were actually asking ourselves, is it just going to go away again? And we will just go back and just to the know, uh, the well-known and uh, maybe also a comfortable place to be. Uh, yeah. And today we are, I think we're at a different maturity level. So if you ask me, are you agile? I would say yes. We still have teams that are at different levels when it comes to working agile, but we are at a different place and also a better place when it comes to that. Um, mm. But then new challenges arise. Uh, mm. Yeah. Mm. So what are your next steps? What are you going to do? Uh, in uh, IT, we are very much focused. If, we are very much focused on uh, getting our, just building even stronger teams. So mm. for the past uh, half year, we, uh, at least when we decided that we work with OKRs and one of our objectives is to grow teams and communities. And uh, when we talk about this growing teams, I think I even brought it onto the agenda myself. I had this idea, we just go ahead, work with psychological safety. That's what they need. And then I think uh, we realized that maybe we should start somewhere else. So we've been doing trainings where we've been training our scrum masters to be not only facilitators, but actually true leaders and taking them on a journey with a, we've used an external consultancy to help us that. So we know that our scrum masters have uh, lifted to a level where we actually a uh, where they can push the teams even more, but that also they know what's their role because we've had people come and lead the Scrum Master community in the Scrum Master role. So now it's it's this community that we started again and they've been training together and I'm just, I'm so proud to see what they, what they, have, uh, what they have accomplished over the past just six months. It's just amazing. Mm. And we decided to do the same thing with the product owners. So they are also a, so, for us to build strong teams, we need the fundament to be there. So to make sure that also all our product owners actually deliver on the product vision. So we know where we're headed. They know how to actually, uh, how to work with the stakeholders, how to prioritize the backlog and all those kinds of things. So that's also one of the, one of the, the things we've been working with. So maybe psychological safety is the next thing. Uh, I'm not sure, but um, I will also uh, work with the Scrum Masters in that community. Uh, and then another focus we have is uh, to uh, work with uh, building uh, strong communities. So uh, for a very long period of time, we had uh, one community uh, or a couple of communities and also the Scrum Master and, and the, the product owners, they started out, then they, they, they closed down because it just did not really work. And we found out that it, what it really takes to run great communities is maybe to have a facilitator. So we're working with that. And today we have 11 different communities uh, within uh, a couple within uh, development, uh, one for the, two for the architects, I think. Um, we also have a Scrum Master community, a people lead community. People lead is a different role that we can also touch upon because we did something a bit out of the ordinary Scrum Master community mm -hmm. level. So we have different kinds of communities to build the cross-team collaboration, but also make sure that we actually work in some kind of a similar cadences uh, 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 across the organization. Yeah. Mm. Great. It's a very quiet audience. Uh, you are allowed to ask questions. Uh, uh, but um, you, you, you showed me, uh, because you mentioned um, how you built your, your Scrum Masters and product owners, but you, you showed me a, a slide uh, a little bit uh, where you showed the, uh, the, uh, um, the responsibilities, uh, the, the uh, people, uh, um, I, don't, I don't remember what you call them. But I guess yeah, people needs. Yeah. yeah. Should I share with you what actually happened on that account? Uh, let me mm -hmm. just. Um, <clears throat> I will. I, I will go into the slideshow again, mm -hmm. they, so you don't have to look at me either. I think the slideshow yeah, no, might so, be a bit more so, interesting. Please, please ask questions. Um, yeah, if you have any, just uh, I'd be happy to share anything I know or don't know. Anyways, uh, when. Um, when we had made this uh, transformation, we also learned very fast that we have to bring back the nearness back into the organization. One thing that actually happened was when we did the, the transformation, it turned out that suddenly we were 
a, I think we were eight or 10 people in the top management team and the span of control was uh, for several of these uh, uh, leaders sitting there was uh, something like uh, 50 plus. And I think uh, the one who had the most uh, indirect uh, report was actually 56. And it turned out that um, when I joined in October, they just finished the development talk period. And I think for many of the managers, they had this idea that they were very uh, present because they were constantly speaking with the employees. Uh, but I think for the employee that was number 46 in the row of the development talks uh, and then hadn't been seen for a, a very long period of time, uh, I think they actually lacked a bit of nearness. And it was also a very vulnerable, uh, very vulnerable time in our organization because we were not giving instructions, this is how you should work or this is what you should do. What we left it actually up to the teams on their own to define how could we, uh, how should we work Scrum? How should we, uh, uh, how should we set up the team and how should we work together? Just a very classical uh, uh, Scrum with uh, no uh, cookbook, but uh, a lot of ideas. Um, so uh, what we learned very fast was actually that we had to do something to uh, bring back the nearness to the organization. Uh, and also, uh, we also learned very fast that sitting in an, a, a development talk with a, a, a leader that had no idea about what was the product that we put up in this uh, product uh, team, uh, it we had, which had the end-to-end own, -end ownership. So many of us, some of our employees would go in, have a dialogue and agree, this is the course I'm going to take, or this is the conference I would attend. And then they would go back out into the, into the team and say, oh, I'm going to this conference. Then the team would be, okay, could you just repeat to me, why is that relevant to our product? Or why is that relevant to the product vision we have? So we had to do something to actually be aligned. So what we were working on and developing ourselves uh, in the direction in the team, we should uh, be something that would be working for, uh, for the team and uh, also support the product. So we had to build some HR processes and a trainer in leadership. So first of all, what we did is very classical, just to say the span of control was simply too big, so we had to reduce it. But it's just how do you actually uh, do that? And today we have a span of control. The teams are in general eight, between eight and five, um, I think between eight and 12, I would rather say a, a couple of bigger and a, some of them are a bit smaller, blah, blah, blah. So in average, they're around uh, 12. But I think this is the slide you were talking about, Inga, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, actually, uh, the teams that we have uh, are supported by uh, the Scrum Master, which will do uh, with own, they, they, the Scrum Masters for us own the team. Uh, and uh, as I said before, we are trying to build this true leadership uh, when uh, the new um, Scrum Guide came out in, was it 21, November 21, I think, said we, we're going from being secretaries or coordinators to actually being true leaders. But that is a ship that is not happening overnight. But the, the Scrum master has the team, build the team, work with the team, and help the team in just improving and working together, and also uh, own the events, so they would facilitate that. They might uh, delegate some of the events to others, but as such, it aligns with the Scrum Master. Then we have the product owner, and the product owner actually is the person that uh, has the stakeholders. They uh, they own the product, uh, or the team owns the product, but as such, the, the product owner is also the one to make the product vision and also to prioritize uh, the stuff that comes from the stakeholders on what are we working on. So they own, uh, own that part um, and very much into uh, the stakeholder management. And then we have a circle lead. And a circle lead is what you could say, the people that are actually in the leadership team. Uh, and that was... That was the setup we had in the beginning, but then uh, we actually introduced this uh, people lead uh, role. And this is an odd one in an agile setup. Uh, you, you don't find that in the books, but uh, we learned very fast. And uh, those of you who are very quick would also have seen the, um, when I uh, had the front page of the slideshow, it said maybe there's an uh, I in teams after all, because we learned very fast that you cannot just put people together in teams and just expect, expect them to have this uh, honesty, openness, and just work together without problems. So we found out that we needed someone who could actually work closely closely with, uh, with people and help people land in this uh, setup. And then you could ask, but what is the people lead? And the people lead is um, someone who actually has focus on the individual. And then you could ask, but didn't you just say that that's wrong? And that's also what you were working with from a, a HR perspective that you had to change that around? Yes. But we actually believe that we needed that. 
So it would, it's someone that's just there to hold your hand and they actually help you land in the teams. They are also the ones to handle some of the administrative stuff. So it's the illness or vacation and stuff like that. But in general, and they also own the HR processes. But uh, this is the people lead role, which is, uh, as I said, a, a bit of an odd one. And I think one thing that we did from the beginning, so when we knew, and also I knew, and I think that's probably one of, been one of my, to be honest, uh, I can say this in this closed forum, uh, one of my biggest challenges was actually to understand how to work agile myself. Um, so what we did, we actually created a people lead community. And it was in this community that we built all the HR processes. I come from a, a role as an HR director in a manufacturing company, and I had I held a great roles where I was the one to decide. So this is how we do people stuff. This is how we work with HR. So if we want to design a development talk in a different in a different way, I would decide. So and I would uh, also uh, I would own all the processes. I would design uh, what is going to happen when over the year, all that. But uh, if I should also be agile and uh, HR should also be agile in this setup. We also just learned very fast that maybe we should take our own medicine and actually work with my closest stakeholders Then those were the people leads. So how could we together build what was right for the organization? Not what I thought was right, but what actually my stakeholders out in the organization thought was right for their people. So we did that. So they uh, actually helped build all the, uh, HR processes, I have a couple of examples if you want to know, but uh, as soon as we realized that actually you cannot, you cannot work uh, on an individual level as, uh, as we do in traditional HR, but you have to work on teams for everything you do, uh, that was uh, very difficult for, for us at least, but that's what we did. My role has been to be the facilitator. So uh, I own this community and it's uh, we just turned three years old, so <clears throat> and you could think that well, shouldn't it? Do, should you do something different? But it's still running. Uh, I'm trying to reinvent the community every now and then. <clears throat> but my job is to just to make sure that we are facilitated right. My job is to make sure that we actually push ourselves a bit, but also that uh, we stay relevant. So uh, we tried several times in this community actually to build a backlog of things we want to work on. So we would have something we could go back to and say, well, now this is important for us but we never revisited because uh, constantly when we meet in the community, new topics come up or whatever is uh, relevant to the organization. Now they talk about career path. Okay, let's grasp it. Or they're talking about hybrid workforce. Okay, let, let's, let's grasp it. So we work with whatever is relevant for our, our organization and the people as well. Hmm. So, um, yeah. yeah. I don't know if that's what you were looking for, but that's at least- Yeah, yeah, issue. absolutely. <laughs> Uh, then I get one question. What is the general size of the team? <clears throat> As I said, uh, it's between uh, eight and 12. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think I haven't counted, uh, but I do have an organization chart somewhere where I could count, but we actually try to keep them at uh, not getting too big. And mm -hmm. if they get too big, oftentimes uh, we have teams, you know, they arise and disappear uh, depending on what the, the business actually needs from us. Mm -hmm. So if we have a new needs or a digitalization product or a project, or we have a, a request for specific, um, a, well, a, functionalities or anything like that systems in the, the business. Well, our teams would have to work with that. And if it's a, such a big request that requires a new team to rise it will. And I think even we have someone in the room here who was part of that. So when we did a digital showroom, I think it came up and then, uh, and that's still a team, Christina, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. Then uh, we have another question. Um, what change in terms of HR vision, approach, and initiatives? Um. <laughs> and that's a good question because uh, for those of you who know me just a bit, you would know that uh, I am not at all into uh, HR strategies and five-year plans and stuff like that, but we work intuitively. But if you ask me, so where are you headed? You could, I, could, uh, I could give you words on that because I know where we headed and I know 
that, but as such, uh, there is a, a, a very uh, strict vision uh, from a people perspective in this cellar, overall in this cellar. We have uh, eight uh, people goals that we have to follow and that we actually support, and we also support that from an IT perspective. But uh, working with, uh, I never made an HR vision. Uh, we have a... You break up a little bit. Uh, we made a. Okay. Yep. Can you hear me? Yeah, That's... now we hear you. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry for yeah. that. I yeah. have yeah. us very. Un... Nobody's on the phone, nobody's on the telly, nothing is happening in the house today. <laughs> I said, do not, because uh, we have a stable line, uh, unstable yeah. line. I'm sorry for that. Okay, I'm not sure. I lost it there. What yeah. was I? Uh... Did I, did I answer the question? I'm not sure. I can't remember uh, yes, the question. Uh, I think you did, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, um, and then there's another part. Looking back at the experience you had, what would, you, what would your advice be to other organizations that still are in the beginning of this journey and not so experienced yet? I think, um, well, it depends on not experienced in working agile. Mm -hmm. Or if it's just we work agile, but we're not experienced in working uh, agile HR wise. So because I would think what I learned very fast is uh, I knew that something was wrong with all the tools that I had in my toolbox and the way that we actually uh, work with HR. Uh, but it's very difficult to design something new if you have no idea of what's the context you're designing for. So just understanding agile. So what are the fundaments of the agile? You don't have to be an agile ninja to actually uh, succeed with that. Just understanding what are the, what's the mindset? What are the, the fundamentals of it? And building from there. From there. Uh, so my advice would be to understand what are the fundamentals? What's the concept? And then um, I think uh, dare to be courageous. I think, uh, and also there to build so what feels right. So much of the stuff that we built uh, in Bessel IT is not because we read it in a book. Maybe we did that later when we learned about agile people, but we built it because we thought it was right. So we built it from our gut feeling. We built it from experience, what we thought was right for the organization. So I think that would be my advice. Try to be, stay too close to the organization and uh, give them what they need, not necessarily what they want. I think that's mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. something from agile. Mm -mm. Um, then, uh, then there is a um, question. Uh, I like this. It's like yeah. you're really, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm making you sweat a bit better. Thank you, Charlotte. Can you elaborate uh, on the people? Or can you elaborate on the people lead is not a title, but a role. Can anyone be a people lead? Is it a temporary role or is it the only role? Someone has. You disagree, you keep your mouth shut because you don't want to be an outcast. Okay. That's conformity. This is funny. Yeah, this happens. I love this when we work from home. Yeah. It wasn't okay. here. Okay, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh. Yes, I can elaborate on that. So mm -hmm. uh, actually, when we designed the people lead role, it is a role. It's not a title. So uh, I'm not sure. I do. I do think we have a couple of people who actually used it as a title over time. But as such, it's it's not that. So you would be a product owner and a people lead. And those of you who are just a bit smart here would say, but doesn't that contradict? So on one hand, you have to push the team, push the individual, push everything from a stakeholder perspective and the product. And then on the other hand, you have to be like, have the back and make sure that they land in this in a good way. Uh, that was also a challenge we had and we work with, but as such, it's um, you could be a people lead uh, together with something else. And that would um, mostly, we have that as scrum master, people lead, product owner, people lead, and a few that are agile coaches and people lead. Yeah. Um, I don't know if the, that actually answered the question. I just elaborated on it. So. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Um, can you name some points where you need to use hacks? I mean, the situation where it seemed people block agile 
or people who are not able to adapt Scrum or something? Uh, I think, I don't know if we use hacks and uh, I'm not uh, prone to using the concept of hacks, but then again, I think we don't do anything but that. So, um, and the question was about, so if we do agile, but let me just uh, answer it from a different perspective, because you have to remember that I work in HR. I'm not an agile coach. I do not own uh, the agile agenda as such. So I work from an HR perspective, but we do have oftentimes where people um, make us, or we make assumptions in the organization, or we have difficulties in actually accepting things. And then we, uh, we work in close dialogue with the organization to actually change that. So <clears throat> an HR perspective could be. So when uh, the people leads came right after a period of time with development talks, this is exactly a year ago, they came and said, well, we need career paths. We don't have career paths in a uh, Bessela. Uh, uh, we don't have it in uh, IT. We did have it in IT uh, right before uh, the agile transformation, but we don't have it uh, today. Uh, then we actually became very curious. So when the people lead say we need career paths, let's ask our people, why are career paths so important to you? And then we said to them, we don't have career paths in the Bessela IT. What do you make of that? And what do you think they said? They said, career paths? We don't want that. Don't put me in a box. Give me an idea of where I can go instead, but don't put me in a box. So I think it's also being very curious about not just assuming that we know what they mean when they say something or just diving into actually understanding what the problem is and work with the right thing. So instead of making career paths, we made something different. We made some cheat sheets of role expectations instead. And I think uh, we're working with that right now. And it just made a world of a difference for many of us, for both our employees, but also in, certainly for the people uh, as well. I don't know if that answered, but yeah. Yeah, that's um, the best but I can you do. also had, you had something on, in your presentation about yes. that. Uh, and when we have been talking, uh, you, you, we, we discussed a little bit uh, uh, remuneration uh, and compensation, but then you said uh, we are trying this out, uh, but but our emphasis is on growing people. So yes, uh, I just need to understand if you want me to share something. I referring yeah, to anything? You had a, you had a slide where you had this uh, career. Uh, yeah. not, yeah. Okay, I got it. Got it. Just mm -hmm. a because we're talking about different things. I think this might be the one you're asking for. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So uh, this is actually what we came up with instead with the career path. And then uh, let me just uh, go on to the remuneration part after that. So when we work with um, this, people said they wanted career paths. We were curious about that and found out they, that's not what they wanted, but they wanted something to get an idea where to go. First of all, we learned very fast that maybe we have all the stories in the organization already. So sharing stories from people who actually made their own path. So for us, and this is also something that I learned from Agile people from the training that we did there, but also on a Gartner conference that I participated in, you have to set your own GPS. So where are you headed? But you might go up a bit, go down a bit. So we talk about career paths as career mosaics instead. And I think that's actually what we're trying to illustrate by also telling stories of uh, this guy who was apprentice, he became a supporter today, he's one of our best developers or someone else who just made a different path. But you don't have to go the strict line, but you can go uh, whichever way you wanna go, but just set your, your mind on something, uh, set your GPS on something and let us work on that together. And for that, we also created these uh, role expectations. And that's also a concept that we actually stole from uh, some of the trainings we did uh, with Agile people, uh, or at least was inspired to work with uh, these role expectations. So this is not a strict role description saying that uh, this is, but it's more, so what's expected of me when I join this uh, role? What's the contribution I will have in the team? And what's the contribution that I actually will give to the IT? So these are, so, it gives you an idea of, so I might be sitting today being a supporter and I'm dreaming of becoming an analyst. Then I can look into this and see, so what does it actually take for me in one column? So what do I have to be able to? 
And then you asked me, that's true, someone had asked you yesterday or were curious about how, how about remuneration or pay compensation, did we actually work with that? And I, I said to you also, it's, no, no, we haven't done the, let's just give the team a bag of money, let them share it amongst them because that's where we are. As I shared from the very beginning today, we put focus on how can we build even stronger teams. And we actually believe that our teams are not there yet. So um, right now what we're working on, uh, or you could say what we had before was uh, when we did people review, many of you know, you know the process of nine grids and stuff like that. So you would have to, if you were going to have a pay raise, you would probably have to get a specific number or you would have, to, you, you might have been a, a six or a seven. I don't know, I wasn't here at that time. So I, I was only told. Uh, but what we did at the beginning was uh, of the journey here was to split it up very strictly. So we did the, we have to do the people review. And those of you who are into this truly agile stuff would say, but you wouldn't do the people review, but I have to. We work still in a big organization of 18,000 people with a H, traditional thinking HR. Um, so we have to also deliver on some, some of that stuff. But we do people review our way. So it's not so it's not so much about the numbers, but it's much more about the people. So we talk about how can we actually grow the people and help each other to have different perspectives and how can we help each other grow uh, grow the people and today it's just completely separated so there's uh, no link at all between being a five and if you're having a pay raise or not that's held, handled by uh, it. the teams will be given a sum of money and that sum of money is given to the uh, people lead uh, some people lead say well I, in this agile perspective, I will just give them the same amount, all of them. In other teams, they, uh, the people lead decide uh, differently. So, but it's up for the TV, people lead to actually do that. Mm. Yeah. We have two questions. Even if you have these uh, cheat sheets, mm -hmm. how do you improve for each role? And then there's another connected to this. Did you consider using T profiles for career paths and personal development? And they are linked together, yeah? Yeah, I think uh, starting with the T profiling, it's like a, it's a very, uh, it's like the fundament. And we are working with a, making a T profile. So let me just share a, a short minute with you a different, uh, um, we think I think we have it there right up here this one so one thing we did was actually to build this concept and I think it actually supports it very well so uh, in this uh, this is a concept where the team does a development talk so they actually agree on what are the competences that we have in the team that are most important for the team for the product vision so if we're going to deliver on that and the roadmap for the next six months what are the competences that we have today uh, they first discuss that and then after that they go in and discuss so what are the competences that we actually need but uh, having end-to-end -end ownership in the team goes without saying you need to have the t profiles uh, or because uh, you could sit here being a, in a team, the teams have like analysts, developers, architects, supporters, uh, anything uh, would go into, oh, sorry, would go into, uh, go into the team. But um, if you think that I'm only here to do my task working on that and not being prepared to pick up the phone if, uh, if one of our customers uh, calls us or the stakeholders uh, grab hold of us, that's not how it works. So we, we try to work with that. And when they do this, they actually start up the session by actually discussing, so what is it to be a T-shaped uh, profile? So just so you know, that was the first question and I didn't hear that. Oh, I heard it, but I forgot it because I was so uh, <laughs> engaged in the second uh, yeah. question. Sorry for that. Yeah, even if you have these sheet sheets, how do you yeah. improve for each role? So uh, how do I do improve the individual? So because we do yeah, have... Was, uh, yeah, the same person, Mina, is asking, how do you estimate the level of competency and in improvement plans for each role? You just saw that, mm -hmm. right? So that is, that's actually what happened. I'll just share the, the slide again. So this is actually what happens here. So what you can see, it, it's not really uh, easy to see, but you have the pie charts up here. And what the team does is, so these are the pictures, these are the people going down here, and then you have the competences out here. And those of you who are a bit smart would say, 
those are a lot of competences. Today, they go through a co-creation process first to agree on what are the 10 most important competences that we need in the team for the next six months. Um, and then they go through it and say, well, I'm a 25% or I'm 30, or I'm 50% or 75%, depending on the level of proficiency I have on this uh, level. And then the team would discuss it. So if you're 75, I'm only 25. And then when we first have to find, so what is, what is the actual picture right now? But if we're going to deliver on the vision going forward, so what? How do should we need? What do we need to develop? So first of all, are there competences or uh, knowledge that we don't have today that are needed within half a year that some of us should look start looking at? So you, we could add that, and that could be. Is that I start with a zero, but after half a year, I have to be twenty five percent. I would have to know what is this software or something like that. So in the team, you actually discuss. So what's my level of proficiency? But also here, we don't stop there. The teams also discuss, so if I commit to actually getting better at this area to support the team and uh, our product development, uh, how am I going to do it? I say they appear to be a training. Am I going to read a book? Am I going to do a tutorial? Whatever that is, that's actually all put up uh, here. And of course, COVID-19 made us go online with this uh, concept and it works just perfectly fine as well, working on a mural board and uh, many of them decide either to put this in Jira or they have it in a, in a, in simply in an Excel spreadsheet. Mm. So, uh, but this is where it's defined. What also happens is after that you would go, um, let me see if I can uh, share a slide here because we also have this uh, in bestseller. The, the overarching bestseller, we have a concept called my growth and we would go into my growth dialogues. That is a classical development talk. You would have that after you've been with your team. You would have that after you made the commitment in your team to this is what I commit to do and what I will be get, uh, becoming better at. Then you would go into a my growth dialogue with your people lead. And for the people lead, this is much more, at, it's much more about making sure that people are engaged, motivated, happy, and feel that they are actually using their competences to the fullest. And the question is also, is there anything I as a people lead can do to support you on the journey you promised to go on with the team? So this is how we work with it. Uh, mm. And what, what, what happens, uh, we have a question, what happens if I work in one team and I want to do something different because I've been doing this for some time and I mm. want to grow outside of the team? What happens then? Then uh, hopefully, my, uh, my strong belief is and my strong hope is that people would talk to their people lead about it because mm. that's the type of confidentiality that we try to work with and build with the people leads. Uh, for those of you in the call who also have been people leads, I know that you were handpicked to be people leads because you, uh, the heart was in the right place and because you have a people perspective and people skills. And um, I think that actually is the most important thing. So that the confidentiality and the openness and the honesty, so you dare to say, I think I need something else. And help me look in the direction. You could look into the cheat sheets or we could consider if you simply just need to work with the same thing, but on a different product and come to a different team. So, but just be open and honest about it and we'll do everything we can to actually embrace it and uh, see if we can move you somewhere else. We don't want people to leave us. We want people to stay. And also uh, today our um, retention rate is like really, really high. People don't uh, leave us. Our employee uh, turnover is uh, like really low, uh, just on the verge of being unhealthy low. So, uh, but so many new people joined us. So I'm not scared uh, of that. Uh, we mm -hmm. still have a lot of uh, new competencies uh, joining us. So we have the diversity in the team, so or the knowledge. Yeah. I hope that answered the question. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, we had one question here. Um, I'm not sure if, if um, what kind of resistance challenges uh, you had to face in moving people from waterfall to an agile scrum mindset? I think, again, remember I was not there, but then I didn't, again, I remember the day that I walked in the door on the 2nd of October, 2018, and the entire, organization was lit. They were shivering. They didn't know which legs to stand on or what is this all about? And I think the challenge was simply to getting the concept right and understanding it. But I think it's much also about the mindset. So understanding that uh, suddenly I can make 
the decisions. So it's suddenly that I am actually part of the everything so that I don't look up and ask, so what do you think boss? But uh, it's actually the boss uh, looking at you or your product owner or the people lead or the, the team asking, so what should we do? So the, the concept of shared leadership. So the, the person with the most knowledge actually is also the one to be the expert here and help. Um, yeah. So something uh, like that would be my answer to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then can you change team in case you want new challenges? I think you kind of went into that one. Yeah, and you can. Uh, mm. We want that. But I, I, I'd like to just stress also that it's easy for me to say, uh, but you all have uh, been in companies where you think, mm, should I say something or shouldn't I? Or is it maybe easier to leave the company and get a different job? And uh, we're just constantly trying to actually build this. It's okay to open your mouth. We'd rather that you stay here. We want... We have, I know you would say the same, but we have the best team at all. It's like, a, we sp no, honestly, a, and I can share this uh, with you and don't say it to anybody, but I think when I joined the DNA, uh, the, that was a, that was in Bessel IT was different than the DNA we have across the entire organization today. We have spent so much time hiring for attitude training for skill and uh, just building a, strong good teams and where we just uh, the fundament the the dna that runs in the, the people that we actually have us join us is the right one uh, mm -hmm. where the heart is in the right place and they, they are curious and they all that kind of stuff so i think the team that we have i don't want it to change i know that it will change but i don't want it to change uh, so uh, i really sincerely hope that people will speak up and ask so yes they can they change teams mm -hmm. So uh, just a few quick last words. Um, this so, hour uh, has went, it just gone by so fast. Okay, exactly. I have so much more to share. <laughs> yeah, so, but just to wrap up a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you, you probably touched a little bit, but, but, but what are the positive learnings and what have been the largest challenges uh, for you, you as Anne now, not for the company? Yeah, uh, yeah I am almost that uh, crying thinking about it. I think, um, my biggest challenge was to go from being traditional to understanding what um, what agile HR is all about. And uh, that I had to take my cab and turn it 180 degrees around and just, it's, it's a shift, it's a paradigm shift. And uh, what I'm struggling with today is uh, I'm, I meet peers all over the place. I met agile people and I've met, I've met some of you through agile people and we are on the same page, but I oftentimes meet other HR people. They just don't quite get it. So what is the paradigm shift? And I actually struggle a bit to, to explain it because I can say people review and we all have a concept of understanding what is people review but understanding it in a different setup. Or how do we think about compensation? Or how do we think about anything? Uh, not career path, but career mosaics. It's just, it's the mindset. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges that I'm still facing today. Um, inside the organization, the challenge that I'm facing is probably more intrinsic and it's much more about accepting that I don't just do HR, but I work so much on developing the organization. And I think that's been, for those of you who know have known me for many years, it's just like what I do. So I cannot not uh, uh, react to uh, things that are going on, uh, things that I'm sensing that is not working, so we have to fix it. So go into the organization, investigate it, be curious about that. And then um, I've done it always, but I'm just doing it in a bit of a different perspective. So running three uh, communities is not something that was written in uh, this, uh, in my uh, path, I think that I was going to do that, but I really enjoy it and I love it, but it's, and I probably one of my biggest, biggest challenges is could I ever go back to a traditional HR setup? And I cannot, uh, I know for sure I cannot. And uh, so uh, I will stick in the SLIT for the rest of my life, but I am also having a great time here. I'm so grateful for the, the options that I've had. I think another challenge that I might be facing uh, also is um, that I constantly have to be aware of, we're just a small dot 
in a big organization. 18,000 people, 250 of us working Agile and a bit of people in our e-com and we don't uh, work Agile together. Uh, so how, how can I grasp all the traditional stuff that comes and just twist and turn it a bit so it's uh, edible for us in our organization? Uh, but I think um, when we started out, uh, our uh, uh, HR director, she was uh, like, what is this? Why can't you just uh, until uh, and today she's like, mm, that's interesting. Tell me more about it. So it's I think that has changed a lot also. So it's uh, but it's also been three and a half years. So uh, my biggest learning is. Um, I think that uh, that's very personal, but I think my biggest learning is uh, the, the, the courage dare to think differently, dare to stand out, and dare to follow your guts. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we don't have to read a book. We don't have to. I, I like to be inspired. You saw today some of the examples been inspired by it. But I always take it and chew on it and twist it and turn it. And how can we? Sometimes it's just one word or one sentence that makes the world of the difference for us starting a new journey inside our organization. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think that was uh, very well said. <laughs> <laughs> and I think um, I think uh, it doesn't think we have any more questions from 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 the participants. But uh, I think that would be a very great of, uh, end on this event. So thank you so much, uh, Anna, for sharing your journey. Uh, I really appreciate you put uh, not just a corporate presentation, but a personal touch. Thank you, and thank you for having me. And for those of you who are not uh, linked in with me, please do so. Uh, it's just Anning Holm. <laughs>